Today we're going to talk about a painting by Paul Clay called Sinbad the Sailor. Now, Paul Clay took his title from a series of stories um, in the very famous group of stories called A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. And in that group of stories, there's a series about a sailor named Sinbad and all his various adventures um, battling monsters and thieves and things like that. And in this one, Sinbad is battling some sea monsters. Another theme in Paul Clay's work over and over again is the idea of a really structured system like the slanted grid versus more organic shapes like we have this nice swoop of the horizon line here and the very organic shapes of the sea monsters yet inside them we've got some geometric shapes like these triangles and these rectangles and so he's breaking apart those spaces into very mathematical geometric shapes. Today we're going to start the first part of making this really cool pirate ship with all the sea monsters and uh, fish below and um, we're going to do some watercolor for the sky and then what's below the surface of the water. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take a piece of paper and of course you're going to write your name on it all right and then you would turn it over and this is watercolor paper so it's a lot thicker than what we have been using before um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it in half and you can just line those corners up and run your finger across and then you can sort of put your hand here in the middle and fold it again across. So that will give you four vertical segments like this. One, two, three, four. We've got it in quarters. Now we're going to try to flatten it out and fold it in half this way. And since it's kind of tricky to go all folded this way, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this part up kind of curl it and then do that on the other side so we end up with this kind of a W situation with our paper so that gives us 16 rectangles to create uh, a little grid and what we're gonna do is for the bottom half we're gonna use what's called cool colors and the top half we're gonna use warm colors so I'm gonna go ahead and get my color wheel out and these are also what the watercolors should look like and when you look at it you end up with your primaries here and when you mix these two primaries together you get a secondary these two primaries together you get a secondary these two primaries together you get a secondary and you can just divide this in half this way and you end up with three cool colors and three warm colors so the warm colors are red orange yellow and the cool colors are the green blue and purple or violet as it says on here so I'm going to keep that up here kind of as a little reference. And then I'm going to put my paper down here. And I'm going to get my paintbrush out. I've got my paints. I've got a fresh cup of water. And I'm going to begin. I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the cool colors first. So one of them would be blue. I'm going to go ahead and do that on here. Now that got really dark really fast. So what I'm going to do is kind of swirl my brush in here, wipe it off, and just use water to spread that down. Otherwise, if I go too thick, it's going to make it be kind of sticky and jelly, jellyish. Now I could do one right next to it 
if I wanted them to kind of blend together, but I want to kind of keep these separate for me for this row. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over and do a blue one right here. It doesn't really matter if you stay in order. So I just did a little stripe of blue and I come back and the rest of it's mostly water. So the more water you add in, the more it's going to look light. So if I want it to be darker, I use a little less water. This one had, you know, all the colors kind of gone to the bottom. Another thing you can do is you can get just one little section of it wet with your brush. And then when you put your paint on there, it kind of spreads out. And that can be kind of interesting too. It looks a little magical. So I've created this little pattern down here. And I like what I'm doing here. Um, so I can either use purple or green. I think for down here, I'm going to use some purples. And purples tend to get dark really fast, so I'm going to be very careful with it. And you can see when I get up next to this, it's just going to go bloop, and it mixes in. And that's all right. That's kind of what watercolors are good for, is for doing some of this mixing down here. I'm going to try one of those wet techniques. This is called a wet in wet technique because I've got the paper wet and then I have just added in wet paint. And for this row I'm going to do some green. so that the paper won't make it drip too far. 